Hi, welcome to the Roy Jones Fight Biography. He's known for his quickness, his unorthodoxy, and his perfect memory. Y'all must have forgot, forgot, forgot. We're going to show you how he does it. We're going to examine some of his biggest fights. And we're going to show you a few of his tricks. Or we're going to try. The most famous thing about Roy Jones is the unpredictable punching. Let's look at how he does it. It's with this lean. He does it a lot. And besides putting him closer, giving him a head start on everything, it works because he punches with that same motion. He throws his right hand going into the lean, and he throws his left hook pulling up out of it. By leaning in first without punching, people get used to the motion. That way, when he does decide to skip in and punch, their guard's down. Other boxers lean, but nobody, not even the ones he reminds people of, leans as far or as smooth as Roy Jones. But a style about sticking your head forward is dangerous, right? So he has a built-in defense. His fadeaway hook. When someone takes the bait and comes after his head, he shifts his weight from over his left knee to over his right knee, bringing him backwards and throwing the left hook at the same time. This is his best punch and his most reliable one. Here he is doing it in 2018. That's 30 years after he lost the Olympics to longtime champion, Corruption. You can see all this in the first fight we're going to look at, Bernard Hopkins, leaning in to set up punches. pulling back for the fadeaway hook. But the most important part of the fight was the clinch. Roy usually fights along the outside of the ring where he can rope a dope. And when his hands are up, you'll see him grab control of the other guy's head when he gets close enough. This sets him up for his two favorite inside attacks. The double left hook and pulling him down onto the right uppercut. And these worked occasionally in this fight, but Hopkins had his secret weapon on the inside. He used his head like a battering ram. When Roy would stop trying to lean back and rope a dope, he would have a head ahead of him. And it hurt. 
so Roy would move his head. But wherever he moved it, Hopkins would throw punches there. So he tried to stay away because of a hurt right hand. The right was hurt, beat him with his left. Y'all must have forgot, forgot, forgot. Jones had to use his left more. For instance, he liked to turn southpaw so he could throw his left straight through the guard when someone shelled up. That's also when he liked to throw his left uppercut. But he did it the most in this fight. He used the jab to win by scoring, but mostly to touch Bernard's gloves. This is usually irritating enough that the boxer's gonna try to punch back, but that's part of the plan. When Hopkins would try his own jab, he'd walk into pre planned counters, usually with the right hand over the top. He did it in the Olympics, too. When you're trying to win a fight with jabs or leans, you need distance. Roy's secret is his right foot. It wasn't just an anchor to help him lean further or to pull his body over for his BFF. Jr. leans in with his head, the right foot is about to take off backwards. And it does, often. Jones knows the safest you can be is out of range. He likes to put his arms out as he moves backwards too, because you can't punch through arms. Or he could turn them into a stiff arm. He can get a head start on holding. Or he can push you onto a punch. You can see fighting backwards work in a James Tony fight too. It's harder to lean forward when someone's coming towards you than if they're just standing still. And Tony came forward the whole fight. But Roy found a subtle way to lean forward as he was walking backwards. He put his right foot back, but he kept his left foot still. This brought him down in his stance, ready to attack. <laughs> Convincing someone you want to run away can make people focus more on chasing you than defending. He's setting up his punches with his footwork. The important part of this fight is how Jones took advantage of Tony's stance. Tony likes to cover his chin with his left shoulder. You can see it here. Which has advantages. but it's got disadvantages. To keep his shoulder high enough to block a punch, he has to keep his arm down. That leaves him open for this, a bump. By bumping that shoulder with his chest, Roy takes away the left hand, and he knocks him off balance. It's like he made his own eye in the storm. Let's take a break from this real quick. Let's talk about shorts. Adjusting them is just part of boxing. It's a built-in white flag. Just hold on, let them fix their pants. Watch how Roy Jones takes advantage of this unspoken rule. He fixes him, then while the guard's down, hits him. He 
especially see this in the James Tony fight. This isn't illegal, especially since the only real rule is don't let the referee notice. But even when he doesn't punch, you can see how just grabbing his shorts can change the pace of the fight, because the other guy doesn't want to hit him. Or maybe they were just a bad fit. We'll never know. That's not the kind of information the fans clamor for. All right, back to the bump. Tony started to bend when he got bumped. That's how he defended. Jones saw this and he started feigning to bring out that bend. Then he'd intercept it with these hooky uppercuts that did more damage because he was bending into him. By mixing those in with uppercuts and right hands as he stood up, Jones made Tony's defense work against him. Most of the trouble was coming from Jones' hook, so Tony's corner said this. Catch the hook, come back with your hook. Countering a hook with a hook was great, but to throw a hook well, you have to be quick putting your weight over your left hip. That's why Jones' hook is so good. The stance James Tony's good at is the exact opposite. His weight's all the way on his right foot. That means for him to throw a good hook, he has to lean so far out over his left that Jones can see it and defend the hook before it happens. Unless he does something wacky. Another thing a left hook does, stops people from moving so much. Without a quick left hook to corral him in, Jones was able to use his feet to set up punches all fight. By taking advantage of Tony's style, slower left hook means he could use his feet, bumping the shoulder to keep him off balance, and attacking him going in and out of his defensive bend after he drew it out, Jones got his biggest win. Montel Griffin stands side on too, so he's got some of the same quirks as James Tony. Griffin was the first guy to give Jones trouble because of the way he placed his jab. An offensive jab can go three ways, like your submarine at home. Picking the right jab can clock you into deep water, like your submarine at work. You can jab going forward and to the left, these are the most common, or you can jab to the right. Which one of these do you think works best against someone who leans over their left knee? Jabbing to the left is the safest, but Roy leans away from it. Compare him to someone whose head is more upright. Roy's head is too far to the side to touch with the jab to the left. Jabbing forward might work better if Roy didn't love to go backwards so much. But the jab to the right is the one to look for. The angle goes along where Roy likes to lean his head. Jones is flustered. Since his offense is based on leaning, not being able to do it means he couldn't do anything most of the fight. Lean cuisine has little or no nutritional value. Griffin was consistently able to jab Roy to the ropes, flatten his stance, and hit him with the left hook.
The rematch does a good job of showing how Roy was able to adjust. Jones was able to draw out Griffin's bending. Like with Tony, he used the uppercut as he bends down, the right hand as he raises up. The disqualification in the first fight came from this. By Jones and a Virgil Hill doesn't jab to the right, but he does have a reach advantage and great balance. The right hand counter Roy used against Bernard Hopkins' jab had trouble landing here because Hill kept his distance, raised his shoulder, and especially doubled up on his jab. The double jab works because the first jab draws out the counter, then the second one hits them as they're punching. <music> Meanwhile, Roy had been countering under the jab for years. I was trying to hit him over the top, but I said, since I can't go over the top, let's go underneath, baby. Every time Roy moved his right hand, not even to punch, Hill would jab it. Things got even more predictable as Hill spent the fourth round circling like a clock hand. Since a punch is harder when you run into it, Roy fainted the right hand one more time, saw Hill was slow jabbing back, then really threw it to the body as Hill pivoted into the punch with his jab. Now let's speak to the mandatory challenger, John Ruiz joins us live. John, good evening. Good, good evening. John Ruiz has power, but his favorite punch is his hug. It showed when he zoomed in faster than the camera. Laying his weight on Roy was a good idea with his 25 pound advantage. But while someone like Bernard Hopkins sneakily pushed his head to move Jones into punches, Ruiz stood there to be separated or to be touched on the inside by those punches Roy had trouble landing against Hopkins. calls you boring, said you're a cure for insomnia. This is your time for a right of reply. What do you have to say in response? He's calling me boring. It was a showcase for his other skills too, his rope-a-dope, his footwork, fade away left, leaning right and left, and in the struggle to not be pushed around by a bigger guy, his jab. It shouldn't be surprising, but Ruiz jabbed well. He even used it to lock Roy up in the clinch.
It just meant he got separated again. But it was clever. The best work was probably by the referee. After noticing how Jones moved behind him, Look at that disgrunt. He started picking up the pace. You know, what I saw in the last fight, that was boring. You know, and he's calling me boring. <laughs> that's, that's like throwing rocks at a glass house when he's living in one. And um, in this last fight with, um, against Valio, how many punches did he throw? What, 10 around? Let's go back to this. The most common jab comes from pivoting behind your shoulder, throwing it out from there. When a left-hander does this, their jab hits that same lean-breaking spot Montel Griffins did. After Ludovall used this jab to knock him down, Roy started fighting southpaws over his other hip, going backwards, walking guys onto his left hook, and his right hand. Antonio Tarver had the patience not to run onto those punches and use his longer arms to jab from far away. Hitting that same spot Griffin did, Tarver pushed Jones' head out of his stance in all three of their fights. Normally, Roy's counter to a lefty jab is to stop it with his right hand, then come over it with the hook. But since Tarver stayed back and had more reach, the counter came up short. So instead he won the first fight by using his left hand to feign in rights to the body. I gave instructions from the dressing room. Do you have any questions? I got a question. You got any excuses tonight, Roy? Before getting the knockout with maybe help from a footstep, Tarver stopped that feigning in the second fight by checking it with his jab far away. Same for the third one. But there's other stuff going on here. Roy was getting old. So was Bernard Hopkins. Since he lost in 1993, Hopkins had changed from a couple round brawler to a patient fighter who uses jab, his feints, and tricky footwork to confuse people and to walk them onto punches. The head first style he used had evolved into hiding from the referee, the hip below the belt, fighting after the bell, headbutting below the belt, and exaggerating the fouls done to him. Just under well, I the belt also, line. I would also All these are low energy ways to control the pace. Something especially important when you get older. A style based on head movement isn't going to age as well when it gets hard to bend compared to one based on being conservative or confusing. But remember, Roy Jones is an entertainer. He wanted a fun style. He knew we'd remember him more for stuff like this than a perfect jab. <laughs> 